Hey, how you all going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with crank.com and with that metalstation.com. And today I'm getting to have a chat with Scotty, vocalist and Cody, guitarist for Artifacts, who are due to release their Reflections album, which comes out November 19th through Imogen Records, I believe. They've already released a couple of singles, Cut Me Out, and the most recent one, Leave Me Dead, Leave Me For Dead, pardon me, which come out 24th of September. Cheers for joining me, guys. Thanks for having Cheers, us, man. man. Um, first off, man, for the uninitiated guys, can you tell us a little bit, um, for someone who hasn't heard you guys, how would you explain Artifast to the, to the uninitiated there? Um, um, I guess uh, just high energy, uh, gent rock in, in a sense, you know, like we get, we like to get a little proggy, a little more technical with some of the music, but also uh, make things really catchy and uh, easy on the ear. I like to uh, I like to coin this kind of phrase uh, that I just came up with. I don't know why it just hit me one day, but honest, high energy, hard rock. That's what Artifice is about. Yeah, and the the music. If not, no one's heard you guys before. They need to go check you out because the lyrics are unreal. It's really catchy. It's got some solid hooks, some great Thanks. bloody guitars through it, man. It's just um, some ripping music, and I love doing what I'm doing because I come across bands like you guys all the time and it just fucking blows me away and has me scratching my head when people go man rock is dead it's like no way it's dead mate you no got fans like way. you guys coming through as well man we've been trying yeah, yeah. you know uh, we've really wanted to kind of get our music over that way towards you guys a little bit more too i think because scotty and i and the rest of the guys in our band we love the music scene that you guys have going on over there so, uh, I mean, Forrester Seville even mixed our record, and that was like a huge thing for us because he's worked on some of our favorite records. So uh, it's good for us, too, because we get to meet awesome people from all over the place. Yeah, well, yeah, I no see doubt. that connection with Forrester a lot. He's done the 12 Foot Ninja there, Carnival, Dead Letter Circus, just three great yeah. bands yeah. right there. Yeah. It's like a like yeah. a powerhouse of bands you just mentioned right there. Let's see, I like I grew up and I've always still been a fan of Silver Chair and uh, you know and then Carnival and Dead Letter. Like something is in the water in Australia. That yeah, man, just you makes guys good eat music. different shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, when I'm gonna ask this is um, when did you first come across Silver Chair, Scotty? Oh man, I think it was probably let's see. Probably like 96, 97, somewhere yeah. around there. Uh, back when actually Tomorrow was out and Anna's song. Yeah. Uh, had just the video, the music video for Anna's song had just came out. And I'd been hooked ever since. I, I remember even when they dropped uh, uh, Diorama, that record, I listened to it the first time and I was like, what is this? I've never heard anything like this. And it's a lot. That's of one of my favorite <laughs> records now, you know. It's great, though. Yeah, it is really good. And I want to go from, from there a little bit, Scotty. How, how did you first get into vocals? I've got no idea of who some of your influences are from what you were just saying then. But how did you first get into to singing and um, vocal work? Well, I'd, I'd always started, I drummed in bands for years. Okay. And uh, that's what I went to. I went to college for percussion. And, uh, and then uh, I I'd started playing guitar guitar and singing in bands because I'd always like I'd been playing guitar my whole life and just kind of singing in my backyard you know okay. and then I uh, started singing with some bands on stage playing guitar and then I wanted to run around the stage even more so I just dropped the guitar all together and I was like as long as I find two dope ass guitar players I'll be good to go you know <laughs> so that's how I ended up with just the microphone which it's a lot of fun and uh, but sometimes I wish I, I was back uh uh, on drums or something for a little bit every now and then you know I do miss playing the instruments from time to time but I get to I get to do that a lot when we're like writing in the studio or when we're just like jamming at practice we'll all like swap out instruments and just I think have it's fun impossible for a while. to not miss playing drums yeah, yeah and, right uh, I started out on drums too and it's like every time you see a drum kit you're just like I need to play that <laughs> so, so speaking yeah, a of lot good of drummers in the band <laughs> yeah good guitar yeah. players as you're saying you started out on drums tell us a little bit about your musical journey Cody like you did you initially start with drums and how did you get into the guitar um yeah I think drums was kind of what brought me to it at first um I wanted to play and my dad was like that's not gonna happen that is way too loud so he bought me a guitar instead. He handed it to me and he's like, here, you'll thank me later. The chicks like this way more. <laughs> and uh, so I don't know. I just like learned to play guitar and uh, 
all the while kind of doing like I never really drummed in any bands, but uh, I just enthusiasts about you know all all different instruments. So um, I don't know. I went from there, kind of did a little bit of singing in a couple local bands, and then Scotty and I we had been friends for a while, so we joined forces and started this band. And he was like, I want to run around and not play guitar, and I was like, that's great because I don't want to sing anymore. So here you and, go. And, and you're singing almost every line in. And now, yeah, <laughs> now it's somehow we write songs and I sing literally almost everything he sings. So it's it worked out where I still ended up doing it anyway. But at least I guess now I'm gonna I sing go with back somebody. In where, it's, where it's more bright. It's getting dark outside. <laughs> yeah but it, it's got that great sound you can see that she's got this really great chemistry when it comes to to the songwriting and working together and playing music so um how did artifacts begin and because it's i think what was it 2012 or 11 or something like 11. that 11 yeah. 2011 um, artifice's beginnings actually um scotty was playing we're, we're both from around the same yeah. local area here in tennessee and um he was playing in a band a couple different bands you know over the years and i was in like my little kitty band that i was in at the time and uh we were friends and it was kind of weird because scotty was actually more friends with my dad for a while than he was my friend because uh my dad was kind of like our band manager you know and uh yeah me and cody's out. dad would just get drunk and then i'd be like i'd go over and just like help cody and his band out or write with them or record yeah. them on we had this <laughs> little what was that little digital recorder? It's like that a was like boss, like eight thing track ever. thing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So we but, go uh, way back on that stuff. We, uh, yeah, Scotty's band, he was in at the time, Tetanus. They were a really good band. I actually still listen to their music, but um, they kind of went their separate ways and had some record label problems. And he was, you know, looking for something. And I was kind of at a point with my band where like my younger brother who was playing drums didn't really want to do it, you know, very seriously anymore. And, I was really one of the only guys in the band that wanted to take that next step. So okay. Scotty and I, I think it actually kind of began uh, on my 18th birthday. Uh, we went to see Chevelle in St. Louis and uh, we rode up. It was like maybe 10 degrees outside. And Scotty hey, we were riding in my top. Jeep. Yeah. With he had his soft top soft Jeep doors. and the heat like barely worked, you know? So like, we're just <laughs> like, <laughs> and we rode all the way up to St. Louis to catch the show, had a great time. And I remember coming back the next day and just being inspired and, you know, talking about what we would do if we started a band together. And somehow over the course of the weeks that followed, that just happened. And uh, that's really kind of how the band started. Yeah. And um, the, the first EP, I want to ask about the first EP making that. And I'll come back to playing live because you played with some cool people. But what was that like making that first EP? I dare say it was a bit... Was it hell? Some bands I spoke to, they said, man, I hated the whole fucking process of the first one. What was it like? The first man. one uh, was weird because, like, we didn't really, I mean, we had recorded, we had no you know, we but, yep. yeah, I mean, we were <laughs> so naive. I mean, Scotty had actually spent quite a bit of time in studios with some of his other bands. You know, I'd messed around in a studio here or there, but we still didn't really have any idea what we were doing. So we kind of just, like, <laughs> dove in. Uh, we made the yeah. EP with uh, Lake Allison who uh, was the drummer for Egypt Central and now, now the singer Devour the for Day. Devour the Day. Yeah. And uh, that was, I think, his first, you know, thing like that ever either. We just gave him some money, went and locked ourselves in his like uh, country garage for like three months and got really drunk and made that that EV. <laughs> yeah, that's usually what we do when we go to write. We just like lock ourselves in some like country barn with some gr gravel roads just isolated and uh we just like get a little wild and try to open up and just see what happens you know yeah so go from that first ep that second album in human you can see the the step up from you guys as well but to this one what was it like making this album compared to the first one it would have been night and day eh? it was pure freedom in a lot of ways i mean yep. the, it was a struggle like leading up to like, you know we'd worked we ended up recording it like three different times. And, uh, you know, the second time we'd went to work with a producer and uh, came back and it, it, it wasn't that things were necessarily bad. We just felt like it wasn't genuinely us. And, uh, you know, Cody and I were just talking one day. And we were like, you know, we've been in studios. He and I both have studios that we're recording other bands and we know how to do this. We just took the dive and said, let's do it ourselves and let's make what we want. Nobody yeah. telling us, you know, don't do that riff or nobody telling us 
simplify this or simplify that. We just made the album we wanted, which is what we've always been wanting to do our whole lives. You know, I think that's what everybody, every musician just wants to make, you know, like when Inhuman even was done, like it's a great sounding record and it was definitely a step up, but we still felt like it was just missing something and it was missing that energy and that rawness. And, and, and we wanted to capture that. With we this just, new record. you know, spend so much of our time, like we're fans of music. Like we absorb music like sponges as I'm sure most other people do, because we just are so enamored by it. And uh, we listen to all these artists, like, you know, all the Australian bands, and specifically like bands like 12 Foot Ninja, Carnival, like that's where a lot of our roots are in music, because we've been listening to like Carnival. Scotty turned me on to Carnival when I was like 16. And like, I li I've listened to them since before I basically was even in high school. So like, they're just as big a part of my, you know, musical vocabulary as anybody is. And when I listen to a band like that, and they're doing all the cool guitar stuff. I'm like, I want to do that. I can do that. Why can't I do that? So, uh, I mean, that, like Scotty said, that was our only thing is we didn't want to be told that we couldn't do the dope riffs like 12 foot ninja, you know, or the weird drum fills like carnival or whatever it may have been. We were just like, we want to be able to make the record that we want to make. And if people don't like that, then I guess they just won't like it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Having that, that independent. So I did see these were independent and I did want to touch on that. It would have given you a little bit more of that creative freedom as well to really truly express yourselves and bring out a body of music that you wanted to do what was it like working with Forrester as well that was great uh it was a dream man like as, as you know like all, all the bands he works with you know we're <laughs> huge fans of and all of those like albums are some of my favorite mixes there are and I remember when it came time to mix this record we sent we sent it off to probably six or seven different big time mixing engineers that you know we were fans of and Forrester was at the top of that list and he hit us back you know and at first he was like I've got to hear it first to make sure you know that oh. it's not crap <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and so, so we sent it to him and he hit us back and he was like it's dope I want to work on this and and uh we didn't hesitate we were just like you're For the sure. guy you know and I mean like any Scotty will tell you like any other person really that we work with it feels like they really get sick of us because we are like proactive, like super nitpicky. Done, super nitpicky kind of people. Like we know what we want. And uh, Forrester is a very experienced, you know, mix and master engineer. So he definitely probably doesn't need anybody like us telling him how to mix a song. But we spent probably about a month like going back and forth with Forrester on email. I, I swear there was probably almost 300 individual mix notes that we probably sent him. And he like handled every one of them like a champ. And it's would weird send. because of the time change, like we'd send an email and then it'd be like 10 hours before we heard from him. So yeah. we're like, oh man, is he mad at us? You know? <laughs> and it got to the point where I knew to like expect an email at a certain time of day. Like you'd wake up in the morning or something, you know, it wouldn't be there about lunch. You know, he'd probably hit you up. So it was, it was fun, man. And I honestly... When we get ready to do another one, I I would not be opposed to going to Forrester again because he killed it. Absolutely. Yeah, you get used to that time difference. I um do a lot of these interviews with US bands and then my station, like the, the radio stuff I do for the station's all US as well. So it's like that 12 hour gap in sure. between. And I, I miss a lot of the, the messages and chats till I wake up in the morning and then have my first coffee and same as Forrester and probably start replying sure. to people too. <laughs> <laughs> so you i wanted to quickly touch on the playing live you played with some pretty cool people by the looks of it there man like papa roach uber stank pod sick puppy sick puppies there aussies as well i believe man he's an yeah, aussie dude yeah. i seen him mm -hmm. many a year ago at the big day out and um another band that i did see live is dead letter circus many many years ago oh, when they were first man. kind of starting out that. at a local at a local pub there was probably a couple of hundred people there it was a small little venue oh, that was, was super cool it was a killer show i, I vaguely remembered i was really quite drunk for that so i don't drink anymore but is there any show any pan that you played with that has really stood out for you as you are like fuck man this is really cool i know you've played with some cool ones but which ones are up there for you Papa Roach is definitely at the top of that list for me. That was that was one of the coolest moments. And and the Hoobastank guys, I was always a big fan of Hoobastank, yeah. uh, you know, when I was younger. And, uh, like, it, that's the cool thing is, like, a lot of the bands that we've played with, like, we grew up watching their videos on MTV and stuff. And now we're, like, backstage, like, face-to-face -face with these guys, you know. And it's, sure. it's pretty humbling. <laughs> I think for me, 
Um, there's been a lot. Uh, you know, the ones he mentioned were great, but I would have to say probably, you know, going on tour with Theory of a Dead Man. Yeah. There were just so many times throughout that tour. We were out with those guys for, you know, over two months. And uh, it, that whole tour, even though it was two months worth of memories and th things that happened, it just seems like one big nostalgic haze for me because the whole time I was just walking around like, oh, this is great. <laughs> so, uh, and yeah, that was really, one of my And they were the coolest guys ever. Like, from day one, like, we were the opening band on that bill, you know, but from day one, they treated us like family. And yeah, uh, we stay in touch with those guys too. Uh, yeah, so I just talked dude. to Joe and those guys the other day. So super cool. Yeah, it's a really good theory for Dead Man. I remember running around with a few of their CDs here in my small country town. Not many people had known it. I thought had heard of them, dude. And I'm like, Craig, check these out. Check these guys out. <laughs> really I great. Yeah, I listen well. to a lot of their old records, and uh, somebody gets in the car and they're like, Who's this? I'm like, Theory of a Dead Man. They're like, what? No way. I'm like, dude, these guys used to be like pretty heavy. <laughs> yeah, man. If anyone's riding in our car, mate, they're going to put up with our metal. That's for sure. For sure. That's right. <laughs> so I want to chat about the, the first single off the, the latest album, Reflections, which I said is due November 19th. Um, Cut Me Out. Tell us a little bit about that track, guys, maybe musically and lyrically. So how do you uh, want to handle off, it? I think uh, since we sent you whatever information you got. We've changed our release date for the album. It's now January 14th. Okay, and there we go. January and, 14th, uh, everyone. Yeah, so everybody knows out there. But um, yeah, Cut Me Out. Uh, I like to say it's about gaslighting because um, yep. it's really kind of a, like an open conversation between one person to another, just saying, like, you've, you've been treating me wrong and I'm trying to tell you to stop. And when you do that, that person just still blames you and like says you're the you're the problem. And uh, it's just, yeah, somebody that's like a narcissist and just really, you know, a very toxic person. And the whole point of the song is just basically uh, saying, you know, if I'm so bad and like you can't stand being around me so much, then get rid of me. Cut me out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll feel and, that. And, one. I, and then and then I would and then I'd say musically, um, you know, we really started pulling from a, a lot of gent uh kind of riffs and uh i would say this song was probably the first of the the genty riffs that mm. that happened uh sure. and that came a lot from listening to like 12 foot and uh like periphery and uh, just yeah issues and a lot of those just like really funky guitar parts and and we wanted to start you know exploring that realm but kind of keep the artifice sound with it you know that way you know we, we're never a fan of like copying or ripping off a band but we definitely like will take influence or we'll be like that was really cool how they did that how can we do that the artifice way and i think that cut me out was probably the first song musically to attack that that song definitely was i don't know like a specific song but that song the guitar riff in the verses specifically was definitely heavily inspired by issues i was uh listening to a lot of issues around that time and somehow that happened and then somebody threw down you know the chord progression and the next thing we knew we were like oh shit we got a song <laughs> yeah man i love corn that album rock dude i actually got a big massive corn tattoo i was such a mad fucking fan of them dudes so, nice. yeah dude oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm about four and a half hours worth killer band dude yeah. nice <laughs> jump into the next one leave me for dead tell us a little bit about that track guys uh leave me for dead is is basically about you know somebody that you really put a lot of trust and, and love and and uh building in a relationship and you know just giving it your all and giving it giving them your all and and really trusting them with the yourself and then you know getting stabbed in the back by that person and uh you know you just sometimes it's the last person you'd ever expect that stab you in the back whether it be a friend or a or a relationship you know you, you you think that you can really give that person a lot of trust and then you know you turn your back for a couple minutes and and something something's happening behind you you know it's really so that's, that's the, the word trust really is yeah is what that it, song's about you know uh being trusting somebody and having that uh trust uh betrayed or let down and uh left for dead yeah, yeah and, a, and a lot of songs on this record you know they deal with a lot of uh you know, it, it kind of all centers around, you know, mental health and, uh, you know, dealing with these kind of issues that people deal with all the time. And it's some, sometimes it's just hard for people to talk about. And I mean, even for us, lyrically, uh, we pushed ourselves to be more vulnerable on this album and really make the lyrics uh, relatable and deep and uh, 
even when it hurts to say it, you know, sometimes it's just best to get it out. And it felt like the fact that we, you know, took the, the, the direction of doing it ourselves, I guess, and producing the record ourselves, it really lent itself to that environment because we went through some pretty like low and dark periods within the band of like, you know, we've been at this for a while. We're running into some roadblocks, not necessarily on the songwriting side, but like just as a band, you know, in our careers. And we kind of were at the point where we were like, how much more gas in this tank do we have left? And like, you know, is it willing, are, are we willing to put our foot back on the gas to run that out? And uh, this record, the majority of it was written, you know, during us kind of having those conversations and, and dealing with a lot of that and specifically some of the, you know, like more personal tracks, like I guess hollow uh, specifically, like are dealing with, like Scott had said, you know, overcoming those inner demons and maybe not even overcoming them, just letting people know that it's okay to have realizing them. That, them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Realizing them and and uh, just kind of letting other people know that they, if they feel that way and they connect to that song, then they're not alone. Yeah, a little I, therapy session. I think so too. I like that um, artists and musicians, especially in this genre, are having more conversations about mental health and going that it is okay to not be okay and to express yourself through these tracks and have these conversations about anxiety and mental health for other people like the the listeners of you guys sitting here watching this going oh well you know it's okay to have these feelings and struggle with the anxiety and the mental health and to connect and it never has been anything like that where like we how do i word that it was never really anything before where we felt the need to write about it on that level you know we might have touched on it here or there um indirectly not really meaning to but it really kind of got to the point in the writing process where that became our state of mind so that was just what we were writing about yeah you know like yeah. it did it wasn't really like let's try to write about this i think you know there were days where we would come in and somebody would just be like hey we need to write these lyrics for this song today and so and so would be like well dude this is how i feel today so let's maybe see what happens you know yeah sure. and that's how a lot of the songs came about yeah so when it come to recording what was it like you had your own studios do you think that made it a little bit easier having that independence and having your own studios to work through the couple of years and lockdowns we've had because it's been hell absolutely man because yeah. with any studio you go to time is money yep. mm. you know and with this we had as much time as we wanted if we spent a whole day if we spent a whole week on something and at the end of the week we weren't feeling it scrap we it do that you know <laughs> we can do that and it didn't cost us any money it cost us some time but i think that's what also like made this this record like i feel pretty strongly about every single song on it and it's because we didn't let anything just go by you know we didn't let anything go oh we don't have time to fix that you know we we made sure that every detail was scrubbed out and it was really nerve-wracking i think for me because like i've been in a lot of studios as an artist but never as both an artist and a producer. Yep. And, um, you know, Scotty had a little bit more experience in that area than I did. So he kind of came, you know, we were having conversations about recordings we did elsewhere and me and maybe one or two other people just weren't feeling it. You know, it, it didn't sound the way we wanted it to. And I was kind of lobbying, you know, for us to chunk that and let's just start over, but I didn't know how. And Scotty comes to me one day on the phone and he's just like, so let's just do it this our, ourselves. Let's just do this. <laughs> and I'm just like, what are, what are you talking about? He's like, let's just record it. And I'm like, I, we can do that. <laughs> and we did. And like, it was a huge learning experience for me, it, like both good and bad, I would say, because like just learning to navigate, you know, through the recording process and the do's and the don'ts and having to do that, that while you're in the process of trying to make something that you want to be proud of. Like there's an intense amount of pressure that comes along with that. So and it the, was really nice and the to good, get done. The good thing is though, like the next time around, everything's going to be even better because we've learned sure. so much in the make, in the process of making this record and sure. so much after the process of making this, like that, uh, that we would have done differently or just approached a little differently that we can this next time around. I think I, it, it just really makes me proud of the whole thing because we had no idea what we were doing and we just threw ourselves into that, you know, ocean of audio production and somehow made it out of the other end with a product that we could be proud of. And that was a success to me. I should be extremely proud. It's got an amazing bloody sound to it. And you guys probably Thank the you. first time you heard it after the mix and everything else as well. And then you got the product and you're like, 
wow, this is so fucking good. Why didn't we do this for the last album? You know what I mean? Yeah, Having no that doubt, independence no is only going to help the band going forward. And then hearing the sound that she's are able to create, having that independence is only going to fucking strive you to push harder. Sure. For sure. And um, with the release, um, I suppose the release has been pushed back because of the live side of things as well. You kind of want to really have a touring cycle behind it as well, is it? Is that part of the reason you just that plays back? into it a little bit yep. for sure? Yeah. Um, but we we're still tour going actually... on tour. Yep. Yeah, uh, we're still going on tour at the end of October. Okay. Um, we we got tired of sitting home and just waiting for the world to open back up, so we're just gonna go push ourselves into it, you know. Uh, it's time for shows to come back and um, and people are itching to go to shows again. So, you know, some, some states, some areas we're not going to be able to play in, but yep. you know what, maybe, maybe they'll, maybe they'll learn and open up before long if they want some entertainment. So. Yeah, yeah, the last side of things and like the state of COVID definitely played a certain part in that. But I think the bulk of the decision to push the album release back was just, um, we, we discussed with our team, you know, originally we had a plan and, yeah. uh, we went for the first, you know, X amount of time throughout this release process. We like were on that plan and we all kind of had another powwow and agreed that there's some changes needed to be made. So we kind of yeah. wanted to feel like uh, we felt like we were giving the songs away too fast and didn't really give people a chance to totally absorb them before we, you know, threw another one at them. So all we did really was just kind of space things out a little bit more so every song could bring maximize a bit. output. Yeah. Because yeah. we, we like music videos, you know, uh, we're trying to get another video shot and we put a couple out and it just gives us a little bit more time to kind of get all of our assets together and ready to go. Yeah. And the film clips are cool. That Leave Me For Dead one. So really Thank ripping you. film clips since we were mentioning it. Tell us a little bit about that. And what was it like making that one? Oh, man, it was wild. Uh, it was the hottest day. And then it rained a lot of the day. And then we were just covered in mud and digging holes and getting buried. And by the end of it, man, we were so beat that some of us couldn't even like hold. We were trying to eat dinner. Cody's grandma made us some, some lasagna. And we were trying to like eat dinner. We couldn't even hold our heads up to get the bite. So we had to like use our hands because <laughs> our necks were hurting so bad. It's been like two but, years since we've headbanged at all. So like <laughs> yeah. if you put us out in a field in the middle of the day and tell us to go hard, we're going to hurt something. <laughs> it's like if you didn't work out for two years and then just went to the gym and maxed out for like two or three hours that's how we felt <laughs> yeah. yeah well that's how about us metalheads work out isn't it you go into the mosh pit that's and right. you start slamming around it's that's the only way <laughs> yeah, I do it. Man. and the film crew was super cool man those guys came prepared top notch you know they had the little the little tracks with the dolly on it and uh you know, they had re really nice gear. They got down in the mud, down in the graves with us. So we're, we're sticking with them and doing the next video with them that we're going to be shooting in the next week or two. No, nah, I look forward to it, guys. This has been an absolute pleasure, man. I'm going to let you just get about the rest of your evening. Um, Scotty, Cody, Artifast, everyone check out the latest single, Cut Me Out, Leave Me For Dead. Keep your eyes peeled. They've got another film clip coming, as they just said. They've got a lot more music coming. Get onto it. Where's the best place we can go support you guys? Uh, Artifast.com. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, all that, just anywhere that their socials look for Artifice, A R T I F A S. Yeah, and tour dates are up there as well. Uh, they will, they will be they at will the end be. of the week. Mm -hmm. Killer. There you go. Everyone get along, buy some music, get some merch, go support your scene while you're there, get along to the tours. Guys, last word, shout outs, thank yous, you'd like to add in. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, Have man, us back anytime. Uh, will do, yes, man. Sir. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, bro. Awesome, brother. Have a good night. Yes, bro.